Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to take a look at the four things that came across my desk that I thought to be newsworthy and worth giving a look at. First thing that came across my desk, obviously, the playoff bracket. As you see on the screen back there, let's take a look at the AFC side first, kind of talk about the matchups for this weekend and what's to come. First game on the docket, Cleveland versus Houston. We know uh, Cleveland has this monster defense that they've been displaying all season. They kind of got their quarterback situation figured out with guess who? Joe Flacco, who's been playing amazing the past couple weeks. Uh, they're going against a young, energetic, lively bunch in the Houston Texans who's missing some of their key pieces offensively but still has potentially the rookie of the year. And C.J. Stroud, I think, is a two-man race between C.J. Stroud and Puka Nakua for rookie of the year. So that's going to be an interesting matchup between uh, Cleveland and Houston, but a good game, so to speak. The second game, Miami and Kansas City. Um, Tyreek goes back to Kansas City to get revenge, maybe. Um, Miami had a chance to host the playoff game and get the number two seed, but they faltered to the Buffalo Bills, so now they have to get on the road and travel to Kansas City and go up there and face Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, and those guys. Can they pull it out? Uh it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Even though Kansas City hadn't been playing well, it's tough to go into Arrowhead and get a victory. Third game, Pittsburgh and Buffalo. Buffalo, since firing Ken Dorsey, has kind of changed their play style and got on track. They, they run the ball more. They throw it less. But Josh Allen is still a turnover machine. But the fact that they've been running more with Cook, running more with Allen, and playing better defense, they turned their season around and they went from pretty much not being in the playoff picture to being the number two seed. They faced the Pittsburgh Steelers who just won't go away. <laughs> like, how are they putting together wins? I can't put my finger on it, but they keep doing it. <laughs> um, I don't know if they're going to have TJ Watt, so that may be a hindrance to their chances of winning. But still, they got in. They're the third AFC North team to get in, which is a attribute to how tough and how good the AFC North is. Going over to the NFC side, Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, who sat atop of most people's power rankings for most of the season, are not even hosting this game. They have to go to Tampa Bay. They didn't win the NFC East. So they're going to Tampa Bay to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who's the number four seed. The Eagles are the number five seed. The Eagles are in a funk, 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 but I still think they're going to win this game. I do. Uh, Buccaneers, Baker is playing okay. The Buccaneers really kind of wrote this season off as this is a, a holdover until we get us a top quarterback in next year's draft. Baker say, uh-uh, I ain't going. Baker made the playoffs, got that million dollar bonus, and put them in a situation where even if they lose this game, they probably not going to be able to get a top quarterback, so they may have to run it back with Baker Mayfield. Next up, the Rams and the Lions, which is probably going to be one of the better games of the weekend. Uh, the Rams and the Lions, they traded quarterbacks a couple years ago. Um, again, Puka Nakua, who I mentioned a minute ago, is probably in the running for Rookie of the Year. Kyron Williams of the Rams, who I like. Jameer Gibbs of the Lions, who I like. Both are tremendous running backs. Uh, Kyron in the second year out of Notre Dame. Jameer in his first year out of Georgia Tech being Alabama. <laughs> so, um, tremendous game. Tremendous game. I wouldn't be surprised if the Rams pulled the upset here. The Rams have been playing good football since they got all their weapons back. And not to, I didn't even mention Cooper Cup yet. So, and the last game, Detroit, not Detroit, Dallas and Green Bay. Green Bay facing huge, huge odds going into Dallas where Dallas hasn't lost at home in a long, long time. Green Bay is probably one of the youngest teams in the NFL. What I will say about Green Bay is if you follow the More Simply Talent channel, you know that I love their young receivers. Like I love their young receivers. They don't have a receiver on their roster, maybe on the practice squad or something, but that play for them past year two. All of their receivers are either rookies or second year guys, and they can run. They they run decent routes. They they do make mistakes, 
But I, I, if they can grow with joy and love, they're going to be tough to handle in years to come. I just don't know if they'll be tough to, for Dallas to handle uh, this weekend. So we'll see. You know, great slate of games coming up this weekend. Excited to, to watch them all Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and see what unfolds and then see what the, who the Ravens have to play coming um, next on the 20th or the 21st. Now, we'll know Sunday after the first game who the Ravens have to play because all AFC games happen first. So the first two games, uh, Saturday are AFC games, then the first game Sunday is an AFC game, then the rest are NFC games. So we'll know after that first AFC game Sunday who the Ravens will play. Second on my docket are 2024 opponents. So at home, at home, obviously we have our divisional teams, the Steelers, Browns, Bengals. We'll be playing the Bills at home, the Raiders at home, the Broncos at home, and the Eagles at home. I don't really concern myself with the home games. <laughs> Too many issues when I go up there and end up getting stuck. I got stuck twice. I don't know if it's going to be a third time. It may, it may eventually be a third time, but no time soon. I concern myself with the away games. And we got three away games in my favor this year that I'm going to try to get to. So away games, Pittsburgh Steelers, Browns, Bengals, obviously. No concern myself with those. Kansas City Chiefs, I would like Arrowhead, but not in the cards right now. Los Angeles Chargers, I would love to go to L.A., just not in the cards right now. Houston, Texas. Check that one. Trying to get to that one. Dallas Cowboys. Check that one. Trying to get to that one. New York Giants. Mm -mm. And Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to try to get that one too. So I'm going to my, circle those three games I'm going to try to get to for next year to watch our Baltimore Ravens in 2024. And those are the home and away teams that we're playing next year. Don't know the dates or when or what week or not, but that is the schedule for next year. Just where and when to be determined at a later date. All right, the third thing that we saw. Ben Cleveland's PFF grade. Ben Cleveland posted a 91.1 PFF grade um, this weekend versus the Steelers. And y'all know I've been talking about being Cleveland for a long, long, long time. Preseason, you know I felt like he should have been in that battle for left guard. He wasn't. Uh, he got a chance to play last week when Kevin Zeitler couldn't go for whatever reason. Had a decent game. Um, started this week because we wanted to rest some guys, and that probably was the reason KZ didn't play again. Great game. Great game. Now, it said no pressures given. I beg to differ on one or two, but nothing to to dispute the PFF grade. It, it just goes back and makes me mad again. Why this dude wasn't in competition for left guard? I, it still baffles me as to just, and even if he didn't win the job, even if Simpson was better than him, and that possibly could have been the case, why didn't we see both of those guys go at it for left guard? But hats off, hats off to you being Cleveland, like, Show your worth, big fella. Show your worth, big fella. And, and make, it, make, it, make them have to make a hard decision on, on, on what they have to do with you and Kevin Zeitler and John Simpson and Salah. Because what I will say this before I get off of the Ben Cleveland thing, Mustafa, who was our backup center, played left guard before the guy you had, John Simpson, in competition at left guard. Bite on that. And lastly, the Ravens won the Triple Crown on defense. They had the most, let me, see, let me make sure I got the stat right. Had the most sacks, led the league in points per game at 16.5, and had the most takeaways. Our sack leaders was Justin Matter BK at 13.5, Jadavian Clowney at 9.5, and Kyle Van Noy off the Couch University at 9. That is amazing that those two guys, Clowney and Van Noy, had that many sacks and were considered washed by many. Great job of those two guys. Even though Clowney got his bonus, Van Noy just has been lights out as far as a professional, as far as a leader, as far as a team guy, uh, as far as learning the system and just fitting in and, and being a part of a, a stellar defense. Uh, as far as the takeaways, Geno Stone had seven interceptions, Kyle uh, Hamilton had four, and we had a bunch of uh, forced fumbles and fumble recoveries and stuff like that. So 
this is, you know, what's today? January 9th, these are the four things that came across my desk that I felt to be newsworthy. So I brought them to you with my own little spin on them. I thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. If this is your first time here. Make sure you do all of that. And I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love.